Welcome to the Investor News. In this video, Jim Rickards breaks down the many holes forming in the global supply chain, which he explains will culminate in a severe food shortage. Jim then describes how such a crisis will affect the global economy. So I said there's going to be a food shortage because there's a fertilizer shortage, okay? Why is there a fertilizer shortage? Because most of the fertilizer in the world comes from Russia. Uh, what's going on with Russia? Well, there's a war in Ukraine. We put sanctions on them. We mean the United States, but Australia and Canada and the EU have all joined in. So uh, it starts out with this, um, you know, feel good. We're going to we're gonna hit the Russians where it hurts. You know, we're going to cut down their exports and they're not going to get foreign currency and all that. And we have, and, and that will be one of the effects. But all these things boomerang because there are these markets are not isolated. They're not bilateral markets. They're world markets. Um, if you raise the price of oil, uh, because of one set of sanctions that affects the price of energy and oil and natural gas worldwide. It's not as if Texas or Australia or any other country are insulated from the world price. We all pay or receive the, the world price, as the case may be. So, um, so there's no fertilizer out of Russia, no planting, no food eight months from now. Uh, but it's not just that. Uh, so how does food get from one place to another? Well, trucks, railroads or, or, uh, or cargo vessels. Uh, they don't run on <laughs> solar energy, they run on fuel. Uh, and again, if the price of oil, uh, refined products, kerosene, which is jet fuel, basically is going up. You have to add those transportation costs to the cost of the finished goods because, because you do. That's how you get them to market. Um, and then you get into trucker shortages. And so, uh, you not only to belabor it, but the, the point is when, you know, people think of the supply chain as here's a manufacturer. Here's the retail store. You know, this guy breaks down and doesn't get to the shelf. Well, okay, that's a really simplified supply chain. Not wrong, but the point is there might be, you know, a trucker, a transportation lanes, a warehouse, a distribution center between the manufacturer and the and the retail uh, um, space. And by the way, where does the manufacturer get its inputs? Uh, you know, raw materials, strategic metals, uh, et cetera. And there are separate, uh, and energy uh, <laughs> runs the whole thing. And there are separate separate transportation lanes from the raw material and the sources of seeds or what or whatever it may be to the manufacturer. In the case of grain, you know you don't pick wheat in the field, or you so you pick wheat in the field, but it's got to be processed and turned into flour, and the flour's got to be packaged. Where's the packaging come from? You know, so, so the things you can get on one after another. But that's the point. You can go on ad infinitum, and um, uh, a breakdown in any one part of it affects. The whole thing. The one one last point on on the food shortages. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information, and it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now let's continue. Um, Russia and Ukraine together are responsible for about twenty five percent of global grain exports, so, you know, wheat, barley, and, and corn, and a few other grains. That doesn't mean they produce 25% of, of that means they, they're, they're responsible for 25% of exports. Australia, Canada, and the U.S. are all major grain producers, but we use most of it ourselves. Um, um, and not for human consumption, it's used for animal feed, to because we like hamburgers and pork and chicken. So, um, and by the way, the, the, those prices are going up too. So, but what's left over for export? Okay, that is what it is. But Russia and Ukraine are two of the biggest exporters. Um, but when you when you look at it from the recipient's point of view, you say, okay, you're the exporters. Who are the importers? And what you discover, there's a list of countries where they're, they get 70 to 100% of their imports from Russia and Ukraine. So that the amount that those two countries are exporting, uh, Lebanon, it gets 100% of its grain from, um, from uh, Ukraine. Uh, Egypt, Somalia, Sudan, Kenya, other Central African countries, other Middle Eastern countries, Jordan, etc., uh, get, as I say, between 70 and 100 percent of their grain, either from Ukraine or Russia. Um, and then take that a step further, uh, and say, okay, well, what, what's the, what are the populations of those countries? And I actually did this work and, uh, this research and just combine the populations. It comes to, 700 million people or about 10% of the world's population. So you could be looking at 10% of the world's population um, in near starvation conditions within nine months. That, that is an, uh, an, a humanitarian crisis of unprecedented magnitude 
And to your point, Nick, does that lead to wars? Yeah, that's what comes next. Uh, if people are hungry, they'll do anything to get food. <coughs> Pardon me. And you say, well, can you have uh, emergency exports from, let say, the United States or Canada, Australia, et cetera? Yeah, I'm sure there'll be a humanitarian effort, but the point is it won't be enough. Uh, these, what we're talking about is unprecedented. So just, just, just as a quick aside, and uh, along those lines, uh, Indonesia, which is not a high-income country, it's a developing economy, but, you know, fairly well off, a huge population, well over 200 million people just in Indonesia. Uh, just a few weeks, a week or so ago, they banned palm oil exports, 100%. Well, what's palm oil used for? Well, it's kind of the, the, the cooking oil for a large part of the world. It's how people fry everything. Um, and um, and so, you know, and then that beca- that's a source of protein and fat. You know, we need we need a certain amount of fat in our diet. So uh, this is starting already, but it's going to get a lot worse. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Markus Dahn.